So, the next thing of what I bought, never used before, maybe once, to show an example on Instagram, but I'm no expert. It's all to do with birch bark and stuff like that. I'm no bushcrafter, so I don't have a clue. This is just bits and pieces I'm picking up as I go along. I'm not a bushcrafter. I have an interest, so that's why I've bought what I've bought. <clears throat> and that's why I got some birch the other day, which uh, was in the woods. We were walking along, walking the dog, who's with me now, watching me. I don't know what I'm doing, talking to myself. <laughs> And um, it was all dead, it was on the floor, so, you know, I took the bark off it. I think it's bark. Anyway, it was all dead, it was on the floor, it's in the woods, it's not used for anything, so I've got some of that, that's drying out. Don't know how to dry it out, but I just dried it out, stuck it on a piece of plastic in the spare room. <laughs> anyway, going off subject, so what I bought for myself was... A fire steel magnesium rod. Off of uh, Amazon. And, what's this called? And a flint strike, okay. So I understand I have to take this black off first before you use it. I'm, I don't know anything about this. I've watched YouTube clips. I'll tell the paracord on there. It come with it. It's just, you know, I know you're supposed to wear it like that. It makes it look like you know what you're doing. You know, if you walk around like that, people think, oh, he knows what he's doing. I don't, but this is what I'm learning. Anyway, so I've seen everyone tie that on, so I'll tie that around there like that. <clears throat> there it is. It's a, I don't know, piss cook, piss cook. I don't know. So basically, you have to scrape this off, apparently. And I said, I've used one once. He said on there that you do that to take the black off. And then I do believe you just do that. Anybody can, any comments? How to start with it? You know, as I said, I've used a small one before and that seemed to work, but I was looking around and it's, you wanted one that was quite soft, apparently, to get more sparks off it, if that's right. So it was mainly just to practice with when we're on holiday. Because obviously, you know, you're wild camping, so you're not always going to be using this. You know, once again, it's saying that you're not going to be carrying around with you all the time. Might you have seen people use it to light their meth burner with. So I may use it for that as well. But yeah, so that's something else that I bought. But I'm going to learn. And apparently, this is a wooden handle as well. So um, that can also be used as tinder. That's right. I don't know. But yeah, so apparently the handle also can be used because that's all dried. You can scrape bits off and that can help you start the fire. Help for it to catch a, a spark from the ferro rod. So I'm looking forward to using that. <coughs> I do believe this is called a bellow. That's right, I think. Yeah, this is called a bellow. So we have had a campfire before and apparently you need to get more air underneath it. And this became, this comes as a set. So that's why I bought it really. Remember, I'm no expert. This is just what I've read and stuff. So, and I think it's that way. And that makes it roar up a bit more and burn to help you catch, I suppose. So, you know, come in handy. There's the pouch it came in. I may not use the pouch, but <clears throat> all this kind of stuff's handy. Carabiners. SOS whistle. We used to use them as children. Uh, as you get older, you know, you don't bother with them. Wild camping, I think, from what I heard... Someone told me a story. They were actually wild camping, quite a rural area. And 
they heard an air gun being shot. Remember, it's dark. You're not really supposed to be going around firing air guns, you know, in public places. It's not something you should do. It is wrong. You can do it in your garden, but it has to be well fenced off. And the pellet must not go anywhere else. It can only stand within the boundaries of your garden, as far as I know. Unless you've got permission to be on someone's land to use it. But general public areas, no, you shouldn't really do that. It's wrong and it's illegal, as far as I know. Anyway, kind of subject, the importance of a whistle. We used to have as children, used to blow them all the time. If you're going any rural areas wild camping, I do believe it's a necessity because, as I was saying, this gentleman was somewhere and he was wild camping and he could hear people walking around and then he could hear whoosh, past his tent, whether they knew he was there or not. They probably didn't because it was dark. They are probably trying to get rabbits or whatever. And he had his whistle on him. He didn't use it, but he had it just in case to let people know that there was someone in the area so he could remain safe. So I'd now realised the importance of a whistle, you know. And I will be carrying this with me anyway, even if it's not a rural area, because you don't know. I mean, you could get attacked. <clears throat> Something may happen. You may have an injury or someone you're camping with, something may happen to them. You need to draw attention, whether you should be there or not, it doesn't make a difference, it's important. Um, you know, if it is something that causes an emergency, um, it's good to carry a whistle. And I realised that now, after that story that a gentleman told me, I realised the importance of it, and I will be carrying one from now on, because I've never carried one, but I'm gonna start. I'm going to start from now on because I've realised. So we're looking forward to using the ferro rod. Is that the right word? And the steel. And I will be practising with it. Um, anyone can pop me in the direction of a good video. I mean, I've watched all the usual ones on YouTube, all the famous people. So that's interesting. This was a gift. And this is good in emergency, which I didn't say earlier. Good in emergency because this actually has a ferro rod on it. And if you are in the South Downs, Peak District, Scotland, Wales, anywhere at all, you know, you may need that paracord. You don't know. You may they need to tie that around someone's arm or leg. Try and stop some bleeding. You may need it to anchor down if there's particularly bad winds and you need to tie your tarp, your tent, anything at all to something. You just don't know how handy that'll be. It goes on your on your wrist once again, look, it's got a whistle. It's got a whistle on it. You see what I mean? So, you know, if you forget that and you've got this on your wrist, you've got something there. And a compass. I'm not. I'm not very good with compasses. Um, um, put me anywhere, I'll get lost. Even with a sat nav, and uh, my friends will be able to tell you that. <laughs> That's why, if you're going anywhere, always take an experienced person with you who can read maps. I know I should, and I will one day. Because you can't always rely on your phone. But yeah, that's something else. Ah, exactly, dog. I've seen these. Don't think much of these. But these are quite good. You've got like a surface there where you could cut paracord if you had to, or or your, your guide rope if you had to, anything at all. Most important thing, bottle opener. 
very important. This is for different bolts. I do believe you can use this for navigation. I do believe. I didn't read much on it. It's got a little saw as well. I can't go through a thing, so I don't know. It's even got like a measurement on there as well. Um, you can always use this with your ferro rod. So it's a multi-purpose thing, but I'll be keeping one with me at all times because it's once again it's flat. It's a little bit heavy. But if you lose your knife or, you know, navigation or, you know, you need to open your bottle up for a drink. You've got it there. It's, it's, you need it. And you've got to for wood. You've got something else there as a backup. Brings me on to these. These are a present. So you've got a mini saw. A nail file, always needed. Bottle opener again, see what I mean? Every world company needs a bottle opener. And you've got a knife. And it's all on a carabiner. So if you haven't got a Swiss Army knife, you can carry that. You're not going to get in trouble. It's good for emergency. You can cook it. You can use it for anything. Sawing your wood, you can use it for cutting your meat, for sawing. Anything at all. So that's just something else that's handy to have that I'll be carrying around with me. Or keeping one in the car, one on me maybe, and then one in my bag. I mean, because we've all got multi-purpose knives, but you don't need to carry a big knife about, to be honest with you. You don't. And this one is something else, once again, another present. This is a multi-tool. A little knife. Flip screwdriver. You never know when you're going to need one. Bottle opener. See? Once again, you're a bottle opener. Then you got your... Tough one. Hang on a second. Flathead screwdriver as well. And it comes with a light. You do it in the opposite direction because otherwise we'll all be blinded by it. And we got that as well. So once again, that comes with it all. Screw carabiner. Backups, that's the thing with camping, you need backups with you, because if something fails, or you lose something in the dark, you've always got backups on you. Very handy. So, um, didn't mean for this to drag on, and I'm in the same place, and you know, I'm just babbling, but there are points that I needed to make, you know, with like the whistle and stuff like that, you know, and I'm learning. I'm learning all the time from everybody I go camping with. I'm learning something from them every single time. You know, I've been doing a lot of family camping. Wild camping, not so long. But, you know, the people that I've happened to bump into on my short journey have all been very nice. And I've met a lot of nice people. And um, hopefully we'll get to meet up with them again. It'll be quite nice. Slowly but surely, because not everybody's available to, to meet up for camps. Um, I've got a new down jacket as well. So, but as I said, there's just too much stuff to go through. You might see these ration packs here. But I'm going to be doing some real cooking this year. I promise. You will see me cook. Alright, so thank you for your time. Sorry it's me babbling, but, you know, I just wanted to let you know what's going on, what I'm going to be camping with. And I said, I'm learning all the time. So any comments, like, share, subscribe, it's all appreciated. And I do this because I enjoy it. And, you know, if anybody wants to help on the way, give me any advice, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Every little bit helps. And hopefully that's what we're all here to do with each other. We're not here all to compete with each other. We're all here for the same thing because of the love of what we do and what we enjoy doing. It's our, it's our hobby, you know? It's our hobby. And it's nice to be able to share your hobby with other people, which I never thought I'd be sharing my hobby on YouTube. 
I really didn't. And it's it's strange working with someone who's got the same hobby. It's quite nice because you go into work and instead of just talking about work and what's going on, you know, like I went into work today and my colleague said to me, who I go camping with is my friend, oh, got a new tent. Like, oh, what one did you get? And it's quite nice. And then everybody looks at you and like, tent? What are you talking about a tent for? Because they don't, it's not something that they would even think of doing as being underneath a tarp in an open face bivvy bag in the woods on a beach on top of a hill fall anything at all you know it's not something that they, and they just laugh and you know they try to be in a hotel but this is what I enjoy doing and if I get an opportunity to go out I'm going to take it wherever I go with I don't care it doesn't make a difference to me so I go on my own, not that I've gone on my own lately because there's so many people that ask me out on camps and that's nice, I, I like that because I like being with people, I'm a people person so you know, I do enjoy going out on my own as well but at this moment in time, people want to go out with me so I'm going to take the opportunity and I'm not going to say no to them but you will see me do solo camps obviously and I'm I'm sure some of you would like to see me do a solo camp, and I will be. It's just that, you know, when people ask you along, I like to say yes, I'm not a no kind of guy, you know, and I do get boned at occasionally, and, uh, and he said, well, why don't you ask them how far away it is? But for me, that's not something I think of, because... I go out because it's an opportunity to go out to see somewhere I've never seen or been somewhere I've never been before and to experience something that, you know, like the views or even the weather can be a challenge, but that's how you learn and to be with people. And it's a passion. It's a passion. And if someone can't get out who's watching me, you know, enjoy it with me. Watch me struggle laugh that's the whole point this is why it makes life so interesting you know i love sitting on the set i really do um but if someone asks me out through camp and i get the okay from her indoors i'm gonna go it could be a two hour drive and that's a long time for some people even if it's two and a half hours but for me once i get there I'm looking forward to it on the journey. I'm thinking about it. You know, it's what it's what keeps me going. You know, sometimes I will. You know, three hours is a bit of a push. And then if it was three hours, I'd probably want to do a couple of days. You know, but I enjoy getting out there. I'm trying to go lightweight as well. I try to go as light as possible at the moment, but as your gear improves and, you know, you try to go lighter. You find that, like, you know, like this. In winter, it's going to be difficult to go light because you're going to want to take something like this if it's snowing outside. You're going to take something to stick, like a liner. But you can counteract that by taking oh, the stratosphere. But then if you're doing that, you've got to take a tarp. Unless there is cover. Because you're going to find it difficult to cook. Depending on where you're going. Anyway, going off the subject again. So thank you. And keep watching. And uh, just enjoy it with me. You know, if you can get out there, go out there and try it. You know. You don't have to be an expert. You haven't got to be an expert to do any of this stuff. You know, you can buy reasonably cheap gear. I mean, I proved that with a two-man tent, 25 quid. We know we know someone who goes with a three-man tent because there's him, his partner, and his dog. It hasn't stopped them wild camping. So it doesn't matter sometimes about the size of the tent. 
you know, and it doesn't have to be expensive. That two man tent was 25 quid, so that's a good starting point for anybody, you know. Anyway, enjoy it. So it's dragged on, and I just rambled, but I just wanted to show you some bits and pieces for the new year. So thank you very much, and um, I'll see you camping soon. And there is another video coming up as well. And that'll be me in my um, stratosphere. Which will be interesting. Because I've been given permission to. Well, to use it anyway, that's all we need to say. So thank you very much. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.